Hey, we're Rhett and Claire. And this is the Ultimate Bali Road Trip Guide. In this video, we include all the popular destinations to visit, various hotels to stay at, best waterfalls, best rice fields, and the best beaches to visit to stick around the journey starts now. So we hired a car for this trip, we'd recommend that for ultimate freedom, but you can also hire yourself a driver. Our favorite driver's details will be down in the description. Or if you're feeling adventurous, you can do this all on a motorbike. From the airport, we suggest starting this road trip by heading south down to Uluwatu, the southernmost part of Bali. Home to some of the most incredible beaches and jaw-dropping cliffs on the island. Days in Uluwatu will consist of relaxing on the beach and then heading to one of the incredible beach bars later in the day for sunset. Our favorite beach bars include Singlefin, Palma Labali, Karma Beach, and you have to do the world famous Savaya for an epic party. There are so many beaches in Uluwatu to choose from though, and so many boutique hotels, Airbnbs, villas, and awesome resorts. We suggest going on a Godo or Airbnb and just choosing the best one for you. We've just checked into Bale at Bingen Beach. It's a lowish budget place for about $45 a night with awesome sea views and it's more than comfortable. We recommend two to three nights in Uluwatu. I would say about two nights on this western coast and then one night on the southern coast where there are some of the best beaches we've seen on the island. There are two must-visit places here in Uluwatu, first of which is the Uluwatu Temple that is right behind me there. It's on the edge of a tiny little cliff. It is beautiful. Just below us are the waves, the huge waves crashing into the cliffs here in Uluwatu. It's a beautiful experience and this is also where they do the Kechak dance. So as a tourist in Bali, we highly recommend viewing the Kechak dance. It's a traditional Balinese dance. We actually watch the Kechak dance somewhere else and that brings me to the second thing you should do in Uluwatu and that is the GWK Cultural Park where you can see the very big Vishnu and Garuda statue. Actually, when you're flying into Bali, you'll see the statue from the plane. Uh, definitely go visit that. It is massive, super impressive, and the park is awesome. And they do the Ketchak dance there too. Both of these two places are beautiful cultural experiences here in Bali. This is obviously more authentic, and the GWK is more touristy and built up. So definitely come visit those two places here in Uluwatu. So after three days in Uluwatu, it's time to head one and a half hours north to Ubud. Let's get it! So Ubud is the more authentic part of Bali. It is known for its yoga and meditation retreats. It has amazing vegan food and forest cafes scattered all over. Ubud is also at a higher elevation, so it's a lot cooler here and it's quite a bit quieter than down in Changu and Seminac areas. One of the big things to do here in Ubud is visit the sacred monkey forest. We highly recommend that. But if that's not your cup of tea, Ubud is famous for all of its adventure activities. There's river rafting, ATVing, canyoneering, a whole bunch of things to do. There's also Tugalalang rice field, which is about 30 minutes north of Ubud. So we recommend situating yourself in Ubud. There's tons to do and you can get around to waterfalls and all that in the region. Overall, about two to three days should be good enough here. There's tons of places to stay. We've stayed in villa Airbnbs. There's huge spa and resorts. And obviously there's a whole bunch of hotels. So there's a lot of variety here. We'll put a few of the ones we recommend down below. One of 
the truly authentic Balinese experiences is here at Tierta Empu Temple. It's where you come and bathe yourself and wash off all the bad spirits and come for healing. And it's one of the only temples where the Balinese are actually happy to share the experience with you. So even as a foreigner, you can come here and bathe yourself in the fountains. One of the best ways to end your day off in a bird is to come do the Champohan Ridge Walk. Highly recommend coming for sunset. It's super beautiful, very relaxing. So after a couple days in a bud, you're going to want to start heading east. Our first stop is about 50 minutes out of a bud to a waterfall called Teku. Put it on me. Tukad Chepung. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think. <laughs> so get your flip flops and your swimmer ready. Also bring a towel. We're going to want to arrive before 11 because the sun rays peak right through the rocks and the trees and it just looks super magical. Entrance is 30,000 rupiah for two people, so 15 each. There's a bit of a walk down, but it's a beautiful walk down to the waterfall. It's about a five to ten minute walk. So there are two waterfalls, one to your left, one to your right, easily accessible and they are both so, so beautiful. There's local shops as you finish at the waterfall, you can come stop by, grab a few items. There's also Warung de Kubu at the top of the hill, you'll see it on your right hand side as you come up from the waterfall. Highly recommend stopping there for some lunch. It is a 40 minute drive to Simon Vaya Resort. It is located in the Sidaman area at the base of Mount Agung, the biggest volcano on the island. This resort is also one of many adult only resorts in the area. We recommend staying here between one to two nights so you can explore the surrounding villages using the complimentary bicycles. And the resort can also arrange a number of activities on request. Oh, that smoke. A bit of both. I can't believe it's that big. No. That's the reaction to spotting Mount Agung for the first time from a oh. really close distance. We're within about 10 kilometers of the, of the volcano right now. Oh my word. So from here we've got a beautiful drive through the mountains and the rice fields and the valleys below. It's incredibly scenic, it's just unbelievable. It's about a one hour drive to Ahmed, which is on the east coast of Bali. Famous for its many temples, beautiful beach, snorkeling and diving, and of course the views of Agung in the background. On your way to Ahmed, we recommend stopping at the famous water palace Turtaganga for a quick walk around and photo with the koi fish. Entrance here is 50k and don't forget to buy some fishy food. We just had a quick stroll in Ahmed, what a beautiful quaint little oceanside town. If you're into diving and snorkeling, this is definitely the place to be. There's so many hotels and resorts that offer your diver certifications, as well as beachfront hotels and lots of restaurants to eat at. 
They also have beautiful black sand beaches and incredible views of Mount Agung. We recommend staying in Ahmed for about one to two nights if that's what you're into. We've chosen to go up to Tejakula and we'll spend the night there. How nice is this little place? This was on Agoda, I'll put the link in the description, and it was 400,000, it's probably on a big, big special, I'm not sure if it'll be that price for very long, but it is super well worth the 400,000. One night at the Ting Tejakula Villas is most certainly not enough. We cannot believe we found this hidden gem in Tejakula. Not a lot of people actually explore this area, but these villas are certainly so impressive. And it's in a great location for you to do the Mount Batua volcano hike, something we really recommend that you do here in Bali. We're just one hour away from Kintamani, so the tour organizers can pick you up, take you for the volcano hike, you have a hot spring afterwards, and we suggest that you visit Montana del Cafe for the most incredible views of Mount Batua. So yes, definitely come stay here for two to three nights and explore the area. You seriously need to check out these villas if you're ever in Bali. Seriously. <laughs> After a few days at Tejakula, or if you decided to stay in the Kintamani area, you're going to want to head north up to Sukumpul Waterfall for a quick stop. You can make your way to the central parking area at Sukumpul Waterfall. I'll leave the link down in the description. There are guides that wait there and the fee to do the medium walk, which we're doing, is 125k per person. And that will get you a walk to two waterfalls. From Sikampur we have about a 30 minute drive to the Munduk area where we will be staying at the Munduk Moding Plantation Nature Reserve. There will be a separate video linked above and in the description below if you're interested in this resort in particular. Munduk Moding Plantation is in a great location for us to get to the following attractions. Handara Gate for a quick photo. to one of the most stunning temples in Bali, to Banyamala Waterfall, you can even come strawberry picking in the area. We'll put a link to this place down in the description. Alright, once you have checked out of your Munduk Hotel, it is time to head south to arguably the most beautiful rice fields in the whole of Bali. Once you spend a bit of time in the Jatalui rice terraces, it's time to head south. It's about a one hour drive to Changu, the digital nomad hub of the island. Once in Changu, we can highly recommend staying at Tugu Hotels. We have a separate video linked in the description of our stay there. These are your last few days in Bali. Visit Temanyak for beginner surfing lessons, eat at the many trendy cafes and restaurants, and visit the market to take some Bali gets home to the family. Unwind and relax after a hectic holiday. But if you still have time, catch a ferry over to Nusa Panida and Nusa Lambongan Islands for two nights of snorkeling, scuba diving, sightseeing, and proper island vibes. But if not, you'll still go home satisfied with everything the island of Bali has to offer. And just like that, your holiday is over and so is this video. We hope you found it helpful. If you did, give it a like and please consider subscribing to our channel. Also, don't forget to check out our other videos linked down in the description. We'll see you in the next one, Brew.